Western Pacific storm formation looking more likely on today's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for July 14th. No active storms around the world, but there are a few areas of interest. Thankfully, none of them are in the Atlantic. Uh, we are code blue for the Philippines right now for a potential area of interest that could develop into a tropical cyclone and move through the islands as well as another one in the South China Sea today. Uh, in the Atlantic though, it's day 44 of hurricane season and as mentioned, there is nothing currently active. Uh, what was left of Beryl's energy being strewn around the North Atlantic in a series of extratropical systems, one of them moving on towards Europe now. And big frontal system there off the coast of the US as well. Day 58 of the Eastern Pacific hurricane season and we are giving a 30% chance for this area of interest. Small support is starting to pick up again a little bit on this potential development later on. Uh, it will be further out to sea though, um, so it really won't be affecting any land areas. 125 degrees west is the expected formation point if it does it. In the Western Pacific, we have three areas of interest. Invest 99W, the left one, 50% chance in the South China Sea. 90W, 60% chance now through the Philippines and into the South China Sea as well. And then a third system there at 20% further out over the Western Pacific. No areas of interest in the North Indian Ocean right now, although there is a big bulk of cloud cover there. Uh, convective cloud tops and high precipitation across the central part of India. And in the southwest Indian Ocean, uh, just a little bank of cloud there over the uh, open ocean. Quite a lot of cloud cover actually, but none of it affecting any land areas. So nothing active here or anywhere else in the southern hemisphere today. Let's take a closer look at Invest 90W then, which is currently 395 kilometers from Bislig on the island of Mindanao. 527 from Surigao City, 649 from Tacloban, 707 from Cebu City and 1218 from the capital Manila. Well, it will be heading towards the Philippine Islands, we think. Uh, general movement probably northwestwards, although models aren't fully sure what's going to happen. The CMC, for instance, are calling for it to graze the eastern islands and then head up going towards the uh, coast of Taiwan instead. Um, although other models differ and the Euro model doesn't have anything forming at all. Well, looking at satellite imagery, the two systems are already present. The one on the left-hand side there, that South China Sea system, uh, looking quite decent but lacking in convection. And the one on the right, Invest 90W, still in its early stages of trying to get itself sorted out. But you can already see some signs of rotation, even with this glitchy satellite imagery. Here's a close look at 99W off the coast of Vietnam, and if you look closely you'll see potentially a low level circulation there, or at least almost one, um, but the upper levels aren't really there for it at all. You can see there those clouds just completely ignoring that circulation really. Uh, so we certainly can't call this a tropical cyclone yet, uh, but it is getting a little bit better, and a 50% chance it's hit or miss here whether it's going to manage it before it reaches the land areas of Vietnam and southern China. And convection quite far away from the center. Thought we'd show you this a little view as well from the Himawari satellite from their website. Um, and you can see this daylight imagery of the full disk of the Western Pacific and beyond. Uh, showing those systems trying to develop and a quite a messy picture across the whole Western Pacific there with a lot of cloud cover. A lot of different little areas trying to form. It's a big competition right now. Uh, once again, uh, here's some radar imagery actually off the coast of Vietnam, although there's a glitch with that radar as well, so it's not very helpful, but you can see rotation near the center. Let's look off the coast of the United States, and you can see a large bank of cloud there off North Carolina extending northeastwards. A few storms moving in through Wisconsin and Illinois as well. And in the Caribbean, it looks, looks like this, so quite similar to what it's been looking like in the last few days. Pretty dry uh, situation there in the eastern part of the Caribbean. A lot of dust from the Sahara moving across the Atlantic. And here is a look at the coast of Africa. Uh, lots of dust in the region. 
and here's the Eastern Pacific uh, showing a little uh, disturbance on the left hand side that probably will become eventually that system that we've been tracking or looking for and in the Western Pacific here's the general view then lots of convection all over the place all kinds of colors around the Philippines there mainly off the eastern side of the islands but a little bit on the west as well lots of thunderstorms and in the uh, North Indian Ocean region as well a few more thunderstorms moving into India and into Vietnam and Laos obviously from that other system and this is the the Arabian Sea uh, looking at a few areas of monsoonal activity hanging off the coast of India sea surface temperatures in the eastern pacific are looking pretty decent still improving uh, from a pretty slow start it is around 30 to 31 degrees celsius off the coast of some parts of mexico there gulf of mexico extremely warm up to 32 degrees in one or two spots off louisiana and western florida bahamas also looking good and a huge area of warm water now off the open atlantic there through bermuda and well beyond there now Western Pacific though, even warmer. Look at these temperatures, up to 32 degrees in a few spots there around the Philippines. It is absolutely roasting over there in large parts of the Western Pacific and South China Sea, crying out for significant tropical cyclone activity, it has to be said. North Indian Ocean also looking quite decent with those temperatures too, up to 30 degrees in a couple of spots in the North Indian Ocean. Compared to average then, you can see there the really the large areas that are above average, the Atlantic main development region up to 3 degrees above average at least, Western Pacific as well, around the coast of uh, southern China and Hong Kong and towards Taiwan and the southern Japanese islands, extremely warm compared to average but the whole basin is running above normal and really we need to see some storms to start to take a dent off those temperatures, uh, but that does mean that we will probably see some strong storms sooner or later. Whether it comes from this event or whether it's going to be later on, there's the oceanic heat content. Really very high amounts of energy in the Western Pacific. Philippine Sea really is calling out for something big to happen pretty soon. And in the Eastern Pacific, uh, quite low amounts in comparison there still as well. The Atlantic, still a, le a large lingering corridor of uh, high amounts of energy there across the Caribbean Sea and into the Atlantic, into the Gulf of Mexico I should say. A few more warm spots on the Gulf Stream as well off the coast of the US and through the Bahamas. So what do the computer models have in store for us then? Well, the GFS starts to develop this Eastern Pacific system around about the 17th there from that current system I think the wheel was just watching. Uh, and it becomes a tropical storm, probably gets to about 50 miles per hour. But once again, the GFS is being one of the most generous models, which is why we've kept it at only 30%, even though this scenario might suggest that it's a certainty. It certainly isn't. Um, but possibility there if it does form it should remain quite clearly out to sea western pacific then you watch that system through the south china sea there making landfall in vietnam eventually then this small system moving through the southern philippine islands there it is moving on gfs does something really silly here it splits the system into two and becomes two uh, different tropical cyclones towards the end of that i really think that's not going to happen uh, it's probably going to be one system that continues through the philippines and then on into the south china sea and look at all the areas we're circling all other areas of formation that are possible there in the next five days really remarkable looking at the uh rainfall expectations then regardless of any development we could be seeing some localized significant rainfall in in, in the interior part of laos and possibly into cambodia and thailand uh, and further north into vietnam as well some significant rainfall but the highest amounts will be in the philippine islands and over some parts of the water there the south china sea up to 42 inches of rainfall there which is over a thousand millimeters but in the philippine islands themselves uh, you can see maximums there in northern mindanao of 18 inches that's 450 millimeters so in the longer range that eastern pacific system continues briefly makes a run for hurricane status by the looks of things and then weakens substantially as it enters the central pacific and then another system forming towards the later part of the run here 24th of july there it looks like for the development of another system that quickly gets up to hurricane status but we've seen this all before haven't we in the eastern pacific you got to feel though that we're going to get something more substantial soon considering just how poor the start of the season has been over there 
Now in the Western Pacific, it's a mess. <laughs> Basically, that's all we've got to tell you. It's an absolute mess with three cons uh, consistent concurrent typhoons there. And then one of them decides it's gonna get sucked up by the other one. I think that middle one won't be forming at all. Uh, it's the one on the left and the one on the right that we're gonna be looking out for for potential development. And then the one on the left there is currently 90W uh, slamming into Southern China there as a substantial typhoon. And then the other one, further east if it did form well goodness knows what might happen with that scan the barcode and that will take you through to the force 13 merch store where you can take a look at all of our products as well as our full season and individual storm animations on request and are still waiting for Hone t-shirts still available as well because Hone isn't well, in the silly range, uh, in, in case it couldn't get more sillier, um, well, first of all, the Eastern Pacific isn't so silly here, uh, but you can see in the day 10 to 16 period, now that hurricane uh, just uh, moseys on over towards the west there and uh, weakens very, very gradually as it does so, um, peaking there probably is a high-end Category 1, maybe Category 2. Uh, grows in size gradually uh, but a very um, if I dare say it boring scenario there uh, for that Eastern Pacific system uh, pretty much what you would expect without any frills or excitement now here's the Western Pacific system a huge storm after that big um, interaction which shouldn't happen uh, but what's left of the typhoon is still quite powerful moving into South Korea the, some parts of South Korea and then on towards China and North Korea and then another system forming off the tail end of an enormous front there at the very end of that run becoming another typhoon uh, towards the end of that period I really don't know if that's going to happen or not uh, but crazier things have happened as we're about to see and what I'm alluding to is on this day, July 14th, 1971. Can you believe that on this day we're already up to our 17th tropical cyclone in the Western Pacific back in 1971? 16W and 17W were becoming tropical depressions right now. 16W would become a super typhoon, and I've already forgotten the name of it. Gene there was a Category 2 making landfall in the Philippines, the central Visayas region, and was moving northwest, was quite close to where this other system is actually right now. Denise was dying off near Hawaii, and Tropical Storm Odette was really pulling in the numbers there for the Southern Hemisphere as well in the Southwest Indian Ocean. What a year that was. Well, back to 2024, and the next name in the Atlantic is Debbie. In the Eastern Pacific, it's Bud. And in the Central Pacific, it is still Hone. We're code blue, though, for the Western Pacific for 90W, the invest of the coast of the Philippines. And it would be only number three for the year compared to, what, 17 back in 1970. What's crazy? The next name is Gamey, and in the North Indian Ocean, the next name on our list there is Asna. Of course, the Southern Hemisphere is on its uh, new round of names. In the Australian region, the next name is Robin. Southwest Indian Ocean is Ansha. And in the South Pacific, it's Pitta once it starts up. But until then, uh, that's it for now. And we'll be back again with another Tropical Weather Bulletin tomorrow. Become an ultimate fan today.